What's going on YouTube? Uh, Chris here, do a real quick update on the Miata project. As you can see, obviously there is no engine in the engine bay. Been doing a couple of videos on refreshing things like heads and everything for this. What we have behind us is the completely rebuilt engine. So uh, went ahead, I've got a stock bottom end that I took out of a, uh, another Mazda. It's uh, just a BP 1.8 liter engine, so I think they're in a couple of different vehicles. Um, but went ahead and just did a stock refresh on that just because the other one threw a rod, so couldn't use the block, couldn't use anything. So uh, stock rotating assembly and everything, uh, just some normal rebuild kit that you can get on uh, Summit or eBay or Amazon, I'm sure. Uh, just seals, bearings, all that sort of stuff. So there's tons of videos out there on rebuilding engines. I've got a couple of them. I wasn't going to try and go through that entire thing. You did, however, see me rebuild the head on this thing. That was a nice little thing to be able to freshen that entire thing up. So that should be nice whenever we uh, go to fire up. It should uh, give it a little bit more life and everything for a while. Um, got new oil pump on there, got new um, water pump on there, you know, re replace all that stuff that's really hard to get to while it's apart. Uh, then I went ahead, we got the transmission out of the car, which you've got right here. So that's going to be one of the big uh, pieces. I'd left it in there originally, kind of a pain in the butt to get out, uh, but when, when the motor was already out, it was easy, a little bit easier because you could just slide the entire thing forward. I didn't have to disconnect the drive shaft from the back and pull that out. So that's still attached up underneath there. What I'm doing now is I'm putting on the new flywheel. So I went ahead and got my flywheel resurfaced. Uh, it cost about 40 bucks here locally at a shop. So they went ahead and resurfaced that, made it basically brand new for me. Torqued these bolts all down to spec, about 75 foot pounds for holding on your flywheel. And then for holding the front, so obviously the uh, bolt, the uh, if you're trying to torque down the back nuts and everything, the uh, front, well, the entire crankshaft spins. So went ahead, put a breaker bar on here just with a long deep well socket and just uh, basically put it up against the water neck here. There's not that much force uh, going on there. I was able to tighten everything down and it was, it did absolutely fine. I didn't break anything doing that, luckily. So now we've got this entire thing on. I gotta go ahead and put the new, um, put on the new fl uh, clutch and everything. Uh, we'll get that all bolted back up. We'll put the transmission onto the engine and then hopefully, uh, maybe later on today, we'll be able to take the entire assembly, drop it down into this car. So. The uh, big part then is just going in and reconnecting all those wires. So a bunch of stuff still to do, but luckily we are got the finish line in sight and uh, it should be a nice little fun car whenever it's done. Well, I just had a stupid moment. Uh, basically, we got everything torqued down and on there. Got my new pilot bearing. And unfortunately, as it looks like, the race for the old pilot bearing is actually still in my flywheel. I didn't realize that when I pulled it apart, basically everything fell apart. So now I gotta go ahead and rip all this off. Um, I'll take this flywheel over uh, to David's house, use the press, press that old bearing out, and press this new one in. So should have done that first. Lesson learned. So for anybody that's ever punched one of these things out, pretty much you just find a socket that works best for your uh, so that basically matches put it in your press. This is Harbor Freight uh, Definitely recommend getting one if you actually do a lot of stuff with cars just because it saved my ass so many times And make sure whenever you're using a socket that you use one of your neighbors sockets uh, So in that way you don't end up destroying your own so <laughs> Now some of you guys have asked about this BMW too. Um, this is David's project. We uh, went through got everything basically prepped for it built a sob Fixed it built a sob motor uh, and unfortunately the Saab didn't, motor didn't have the bosses that it needed on the side, which it's actually over here. So GM removed some of the bosses. Uh, I forget which side it was actually. I think it's over here where you would normally do the motor mounts. Um, so unfortunately that motor is going away, but I think we might be doing an LS swap uh, to this one. So maybe like a 5.3 naturally aspirated, not boosted or anything. So next we've got our new bearing let's see if how well that goes in i kind of just put that there use one of these pucks and we'll go ahead and crank our new bearing in i was originally going to do an ls swamp for my miata the problem is however in this state because it is a 99 oh come on because it's a 99, uh, I'm, I've got to do inspections, and there's different laws and everything, so I can't put a new motor in that Miata. So that's why we're going with the stock. I'll go ahead and build it, 
play around with it for a while. And then we'll go ahead and sell it probably in the springtime whenever they're actually worth money. So this will be uh, this one will be a short-lived vehicle of mine, but it will uh, yeah, it'll at least be a little bit of fun. That feels like it went in. I should probably take this thing back off. Whoop. I don't know if you're actually supposed to press those in or not, but I just did, so. Fun. Good. Now we got a new one. We'll go put it back on, torque everything back down, put it all back together. All right, so we got our flywheel back on for the second time today. Went ahead and pulled all the bolts out. One of the big things, though, too, is that these bolts are, um, they go straight through, basically the inside of them, um, plugs up the hole that goes into the crankcase. So make sure that you put some thread locker on these. I don't know if you're supposed to use red or blue or whatever the heck it is, but yeah, put something on them just to make sure that they stick. And then uh, go ahead and throw those in there. That way you don't have any leaks or anything coming out of these holes to your flywheel. I'm sure I've used way too much on here. I used a lot less the last time, but you know what? More's better, right? That's never hurt anybody. So let's see here. We'll get these things in their finger tight, or at least we get them started. You don't want to use power tools on these initially, because you don't want to um, accidentally cross-thread them. So then you basically ruin your block. Like that one doesn't feel right. So, down look. Oh yeah, tons of crap in there. All right, we're gonna have to get that one out. But one of the big things is never use power tools on these things. Um, you don't wanna accidentally over tighten them. Or you can do whatever the hell you feel like because it's your vehicle, you know, whatever. I'm just, I'm just getting these things basically brought down to where they're flush and then we'll go through the torque sequence with them. But first I think we gotta clean that hole out. So in that way, we can uh, get that last bolt in. Like I said, uh, these need to go down to 75 foot-pounds. My biggest thing is I normally take them from 35 to 55, then to 75. Uh, just go in sequence. And just like a car tire, go ahead and alternate each side uh, within each one of those sequences. So that should get nice uh, torqued down and should be nice and flat for you. All right, now that we've got this thing torqued down, we've got our new clutch here. As you can see... Basically, the flatter side goes towards the engine. This one goes away from the engine. But I think on some of these things, it even says, yep, TM side or transmission side, so you know that that's the back. Basically, use your little installer tool, hold it there, and then we'll go ahead and put our pressure plate up on top of there. So this is just a normal um, sort of stock clutch and everything. didn't realize how tiny these things are. Uh, normally for V8 cars is what I work on, so I'm used to a lot bigger clutch pack. Um, and then also another thing is the uh, flywheel. It doesn't have to be keyed a certain way. I guess this is zero balanced. Um, it doesn't have any counterweight to it. So the flywheel can go on with any bolt basically in any hole. Uh, unlike a, like a V8 or a Ford or whatever, you have to sort of key the flywheel exactly. Um, it'll only go on one way. So the time has officially come. We've got our transmission on, new clutch in there and everything. Got our starter bolted back up. Do that while it's out of the car. It's a heck of a lot easier than trying to reach up under there whenever it's under the car. Also went ahead and put the exhaust manifold back on. Uh, a little bit easier again to do it while it's out of the car, mainly because part of it bolts to the transmission cross member right there. God, I hate how this phone will not focus. So everything's pretty well bolted up. We've got uh, all of our wires ready to go down here. Had to solder one back together. Uh, basically, I accidentally pulled that one off whenever I was pulling the engine, just because I didn't realize it was there. It was under, up underneath the intake manifold, but there we go. We got ourselves a completely refurbished motor. Hopefully, we'll be driving this thing not too soon, so. All right, so the engine is back in the car. I apologize. My little time-lapse idea for that did not work. Uh, I can go ahead and sum it up for you, though. Fat guy struggles with uh, engine for about an hour. Um, <laughs> it's basically just you gotta lower it in, you know, scoot it back. A couple of things when you're uh, 
We're doing one of these. Go ahead and remove that shifter. I left mine on the end of the transmission. It was a pain in the butt to get into the car. Uh, but you can go ahead and remove that. It makes it a lot easier to kind of just swing in. Next thing I gotta do is I'm gonna throw this thing up onto the lift and reconnect that transmission to that sort of torque tube or not really a torque tube, this is that I-beam that goes back to the rear end uh, and put the drive shaft back in. So once you do all that, we can go ahead, I uh, need to refill the trans because I went ahead and I uh, took all the fluids out of it whenever I pulled it out. And then we can go ahead and start getting everything connected again. Need to kind of get on this project though because Got 67 now living outside while this is in here, so don't want that doing for too long. This is definitely going to be an outside car.